Good morning. Welcome back to St. James Lutheran Church here for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. As promised last week, we continue with our John 6 uh, reading through the discourse where Jesus says he is the bread of life. And we get to consider more um, elements of how he unfolds that and what he's saying, both for our lives here today, but then also the way in which, you know, he does call upon us to feed on him. As we begin, I'd like to invite all of you who are on our email bulletin list um, to, to pull up your bulletin insert. And then again, as we continue through with our service, um, those of you with a copy of the Lutheran Service Book at home um, will join in singing um, hymn 642, O Living Bread from Heaven, um, as a part of our, uh, as we round up our time together here today. But again, as we begin, I invite you to turn to our psalm text with the intro it here that we have today. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand, and you satisfy the, the desire of every living thing. And let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, today we link with the very last verse of last week's reading, beginning with John chapter 6, beginning at verse 35, and we go all the way to 51. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, or sorry, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who has sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up at the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has, uh, that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died, and this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. <clears throat> and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of the Lord. So the plot thickens. And yes, there's a whole bunch within this passage that, yes, in the same way that, that the people in the Old Testament passage from Ezekiel, or Ezekiel, Exodus 16, when the people were wandering in the desert, they grumbled against the Lord, and the Lord gave them that bread of the angels. And here they grumbled against Jesus with his own words because, well, this is Jesus. He's so familiar. And really, they didn't even encounter, encounter him rightly because how can they know him rightly when they're simply saying that Joseph is his father? We know them. How can this man say these things? Because, well, Jesus' father was our father in heaven. But 
digging deeply into this again. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Our Lord calls us to follow him in faith, to trust him and to believe his words, and to recognize that Jesus came in order to give himself for the life of the world. And this is all part and parcel of why, well, he ends this, we end this particular section of the readings where he points out that the bread that he gives is his flesh. Because the work of Jesus dying on the cross is not merely just an example on how to be kind and nice and how to be humble and servant. You know, there's elements of that that are there too. But, you know, by following that, you know, we, you know, it's a good thing for us to do, be imitators of Christ. But we in ourselves, by our own works, cannot, cannot get it ourselves into heaven. What we have here is Jesus pointing out that he is the one that comes from heaven to the earth, not only in the same way to feed the people that wandered through the desert on their way to the promised land in order to sustain them, but he comes with a greater gift from heaven as that bread that came down in order to do that work so that our sins can be forgiven. But what do we do with those words? Because he gets those very uncomfortably specific and I know that many times as people read this, when they say, well, no, this isn't in the institution of the Lord's Supper. That's true. But it's the same flesh of Jesus that he speaks about, and the same body and blood of Jesus that he talks about when he says, take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sins, and this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Again, that's Jesus. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. <clears throat> and this, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. As John records this, and yeah, John writes in the specific kinds of ways, of, as he explains not only baptism at the, with the Samaritan woman at the well where, you know, this water that Jesus provides will well up within us to life everlasting. Well, it's a reference to baptism where we're baptized by water and the Spirit, where we have that new birth through water and the Spirit so that we're born from above on the day that we're baptized. In the same way, our Lord feeds us with Christ himself. And specifically now we hear as he zeroes in saying is my flesh which is this gift of life and this bread of life that we are called to feed upon John is using this as a way to refer to the Holy Supper of our Lord we'll hear more in the way in which it continues as well in the way in which Jesus explains this in a deeper kind of way as the people grumbled among themselves as we hear right in the middle he says, do not grumble among yourselves. If we think people nowadays have a hard time grasping this, well, we shouldn't be surprised because even back then. And yet, it's interesting to note that the people that grumbled against our Lord because they just didn't want to wrap their minds around and take Jesus' words at their plain value, well, that they ended up falling away and not following him. That's part of the judgment that falls upon us when we decide that we're going to do it our own way or we're going to try and rationalize God's word in order to make it fit our own sense of what is possible and not possible. And yet, as we read throughout the scriptures, it becomes more and more part of the focus and certainly is the focus with transformation of the Passover meal into the Holy Supper of our Lord where the way that Paul explains it in 1 Corinthians you know how it works brothers he says that which is sacrificed is that which is eaten and that's the whole covenant history of the Old Testament that in the Holy Supper of our Lord we continue to receive and we partake in and eat and participate in that death and resurrection by eating and drinking the very body and blood of Jesus as he gives it to us in with and under the bread and wine well here in the same way you know that which is sacrificed is that which is eaten but more than that we participate in the life of that which is well sacrificed for us in this case the very life of God so that as we feast upon him both in his word, yes, as we're baptized into the body, the very fleshly body of Christ, 
and then also partake of the very same body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Supper of our Lord, we are fed with that gift of eternal life so that it quenches all of our earthly desires in the light of God's eternal gift from the one that did come down from heaven and is now with us even here as we celebrate these sacramental gifts. These words of Christ become so important. Unfortunately, there's far too many that say it's too hard and they wander away like we'll hear in the next reading as we gather next week. It's a hard saying. Will we be like the ones that stand among the disciples and say, you have the words of eternal life? Where should we go? Or are we going to be like the ones that say it doesn't make sense to us and so we'll do it our own way? Or perhaps the other side where we figure, well, I can do it by being good enough and by inventing other ways to get into heaven based on all kinds of other philosophies saying that, you know, if you just commit your life to Jesus and pray the following prayer and all these sorts of things where it's not trying to dis people that sincerely follow those beliefs, but that's not how Jesus teaches and that's not how the early church taught and that's not how the church grew and expanded through being baptized into Christ, receiving the gift of forgiveness there with water baptism, and being given that gift of the Holy Spirit so that as the disciples continue to gather together to feast upon that holy meal with the breaking of bread, the way it was called, <clears throat> or the way in which the writer of the book of Hebrews puts it, where it's through the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ that we have entrance into the true holy of holies in heaven. It's a sacramental text. Hebrews 10. That we participate in a life that is far beyond just a matter of filling our tummies and, you know, hanging out with good friends. But instead, we feast upon Jesus himself, the very bread of life has come down from heaven giving us his very flesh so that by feasting on him that we would have a life given to us that is given from above from our father who gives us his son in order to be our savior so that by encountering him you know we build upon Jesus Jesus in the flesh Jesus incarnate as the way, the truth, and the life. Digging into that becomes one of the big challenges for our world today where far too often we simply turn Jesus into an idea and so we say, yes, he was incarnate and he died on the cross. And then we don't allow ourselves to fall into the deeper teachings that run throughout the whole of the New Testament. Not only here with these, these verses from this chapter, the way Paul writes, marvelous ways, marvelous ways to dig us into the deeper mystery of what God has created in us through these gifts. He calls us, even in our readings here today, to turn, tune our ears to be taught by God through these words so that we learn the beautiful treasure of what it is that our Lord accomplishes for us as he feeds us and nourishes us here as well. May the Lord bless us so that we grow deeper into that faith, so that we become solidified more and more into that way of salvation that Jesus himself not only worked for us, but that he himself is, so that we don't get led astray and knocked off of that way, truth, and the life by strange cultural philosophies or doctrines that were invented, you know, even 500, 200 years ago, simply because people had a hard time believing these words of Jesus. So they had to make it up in a different way. May the Holy Spirit teach us to follow Christ in the fullness of his word so that we grow by his strength into the fullness of that salvation built upon him, Jesus, who is the head. All this we pray for in his name. Amen. Let's join in our prayers. Lord, as the month of August continues to, to tick away um, even before us, help us to recognize that in the same way that you called your people and led them through the desert 
even on the dry ground as they pass through the Red Sea, which Paul himself says is a reflection of our baptism into Christ so that we continue to follow, follow and be nourished by that bread of heaven, that we would build upon those same sacramental gifts within our own lives as the cornerstones of our salvation, where you make us to be your people as we're washed and joined into Christ through that washing with water in the word and then are fed with Christ as that true manna, that true bread that came down from heaven. Help us to follow with our ears open so that our eyes may learn to see through your word that beautiful gift that you prepare in front of us Sunday by Sunday as we celebrate that, that wonderful meal reflected even in the 23rd Psalm that we can be drawn into that eternal life in heaven. <clears throat> Strengthen us Sunday by Sunday as we feast upon you. Teach us to treasure Christ our Lord as he comes to us in these sacramental gifts. Teach us to use your word rightly so that rather than reading our own ideas and our own presuppositions into those words of what you present to us there, that we would always be drawn deeper and deeper into this, this new life and this new world that you provide for us all through your Son, our Lord, who became flesh for us so that through his own very own humanity that we also would be filled with the fullness of God, the way in which well, Paul himself teaches so that rather than disdaining these clear words of our Lord, that we would run to, to make use of not only these sacramental gifts, so that we would be filled with you through, your, through the flesh of Christ, but that we would treasure that and make that a priority in everything that we do. Bless us in our world so that we would not only grow in relationship by faith to him, to love our Savior, then also to be filled with him and to be strengthened with that new life that he provides for us. All these things we pray for in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. We say, Amen. We pray together the prayer he himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's join and turn to our hymn, 642, O Living Bread from Heaven. <clears throat> we'll join in singing all four verses. O oh, living bread from heaven, how well you feed your guest. <clears throat> the gifts that you have given have filled my heart with rest. O oh, wondrous food of blessing, O oh, cup that heals our woes. My heart, this gift possessing, with praises overflows. My Lord, you here have led me to this most holy place, and with yourself have fed me the treasures of your grace. For you have freely given what earth could never buy, the bread of life from heaven, that now I shall not die. <clears throat> you gave me all I wanted, this food can death destroy. And you have freely granted the cup of endless joy. My Lord, I do not merit the favor you have shown. And all my life, soul, and spirit bow down before your throne. Lord, grant me thus 
And grant me then the strength and with heavenly food while here. My course on earth is lengthened to serve with holy fear. And when you call my spirit to leave this world below, I enter through your merit where joys unmingled flow. <clears throat> The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And we'll see you again next week.